hello viewers welcome to my youtube channel in this video i will be responding to a question that was asked by one of our followers here on the channel and uh, the follower is one esther mwangi so esther mwangi asked this question here from major mwangi's an incident in the park I would like to notify our viewers that we really value your feedback and if you have any area which you really feel that we should cover then you can bring it up and we will always talk about it just the same way Esther Mwangi gave this question here I will try to give my take and respond to it so the question was juxtapose the kind of identification the police demand from the fruit vendor and one that awaits him at the mortuary so in answering this question we must first know what we mean by juxtaposition and juxtaposition also known as contrast is an aspect of style that normally compares dissimilar uh, situations so that is juxtaposition so when you are asked to juxtapose given situations you are uh, basically going to identify the differences that exist between uh, situations and in this case we are going to compare the kind of identification that the police demand from the fruit vendor and the identification that awaits him at the mortuary before that viewers allow me to thank you so very much for your subscriptions into the channel and again those who have not subscribed to the channel allow me to kindly request you to hit onto that subscribe button so that anytime we produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you again those who are interested and moved to participate in our widows drive where we are contributing uh, some funds to help our widows who are ravaged by the hard economic times in our country now i will always be putting my mpesa number there so if you have something little to spare you can give that dime to help support the widows the drive runs for one month we will close it on 18th of december thank you very much now uh, fast forward to my uh, take on this I have uh, divided my table into two columns the first one is uh, before death that is the kind of the identification that the police demand from the fruit vendor before his death and the kind of identification that awaits the fruit vendor after his death at the mortuary uh, let's give a snapshot of how we get to the point that the police demand the identification from the fruit vendor so the story by major mwangi is set in a given park and in this park a flood a swarm of people move through the park to the various eateries in the city center what then happens is that the writer introduces to us a sort of disillusioned and hopeless fruit vendor who is sitting underneath uh, a given shrub and uh, the fruit vendor seems to be scribbling some sums 
on his palms. Probably is trying to take stock of his day's sale, which of course is, uh, is quite scanty. So the policeman get to catch up with the, the fruit vendor when the swarm of people who had gone for lunch in the various eateries at the city center are coming back to their offices through the game park. Uh, I mean through the park. So the fruit vendor tries one last attempt to make a sale and that is when the police catch up with him. First, they request for a license of which the fruit vendor does not have. Secondly, they ask for an identification card. Again, the fruit vendor does not have. What then ensues is a pleading by the fruit vendor uh, to be left, not to be apprehended by the police. He offers to give five shillings. The police pays deaf ear to that. Secondly, he offers to give 10 shillings. This again falls on deaf ears. The last attempt, the, poly, uh, the fruit vendor attempts now to give 10 shillings plus a basket, one basket of fruits. Uh, one, poli one police seems to hesitate but the other seems to give a facial expression that shows that they should move on and off they go. That is when the fruit vendor realizes that truly he's in for it. So he makes a, a run. So some passers by and some passengers who are quite oblivious of what has been ensuing between the fruit vendor and the police now have a failed day and there is a kind of hullabaloo where chaos break out and the fruit vendor gets killed in that melee. So that is the background information uh, about how we get to that point. Now, the contrast between these two situations Let's first look at the behavior by the police in the two occasions. In the first instance where the police demand for identification, the police appear to be quite unforgiving. They are relentless in their pursuit to apprehend the fruit vendor. They are quite incorrigible in that they are not ready to understand anything being said by the fruit vendor and they are ruthless. They would not let the fruit vendor escape. That is one thing that I see from that first identification. So what awaits the fruit vendor at the mortuary after the death of the fruit vendor? The police are now quite cautious they are quite measured, they are quite anxious and worried about that kind of uh, identification that awaits the vendor at the mortuary. Now there seems to be a ghost law which was not present in the first instance. Again, the urgency uh, for the demand for identification seems to win. It is, no longer, it, it, it is no longer there. It was there when the police uh, really uh, ad, 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 demanded for his identification. That kind of urgency to get hold of that identification card was quite tremendous. But now, when the identification matters most, because probably there is no relative of uh, the fruit vendor who might have been at the scene of the man's murder. And that is when that kind of identification should matter. So there seems to be a ghost law 
as uh, it occurs that uh, the action of identifying this fruit vendor is now left for the family members of the fruit vendor who are probably oblivious of uh, the incident. They do not know that such an incident has taken place. It is quite interesting that at the first point where the police were demanding for that identification when the man was still alive, he asked to get back home and bring the identification and it was not allowed. But in this case now, it is those who are at home, that is the wife and the family members of the deceased who should miraculously get to the mortuary and identify their loved one. So then it occurs that the first instance where the police were demanding for the identification, it was quite a decoy or a kind of a ploy to only extort money from the man. The identification was nothing to do with the man, but it was everything to do with the police who were using this as a way to extract bribe from the man. So the identification that awaits the man at the mortuary highlights what this story is centrally about. And uh, the story is a satirical criticism to the inhuman nature of the society. And remember that even the mob that participated in ending the life of these men were quite unaware. They did not know for which reason the police were after the man. They only considered him as a thief, which comes out really as not uh, the case. So then, in the first point where the police demand for uh, identification, it occurs that the man is just as good as the bribe that he is to give. After death, he is now useless because no money, no bribe can be extracted from him. And that is why he is left for the world knows what. For the family, that is quite, uh, that does not quite know that the incident probably has happened to identify him. So this contrast brings about the corrupt nature of the police in this uh, society and uh, the mob psychology, which in most cases is quite wrong, like in this case. Viewers, I don't know about your take, that is my take. Thank you, until next time.